What's up guys, my name is Odin, welcome back to another art video. In today's art video, we are going to be doing something a little bit different. We are going to be talking about typesetting, or a font, uh, if you will call it, of uh, what fonts and stuff to use for your comic. But, before that, why don't you go check out my comic at uh, SonicsAwakening.com or even on Webtoons or on Tapas. You can find the links down below. Uh, chapter 5 is out, I really enjoyed it. Making it, it it's completed. I was going to do something uh, for a chapter 5 video, but... <laughs> That's going to be scratched because when I was recording, I forgot to record my voice. So the entire video, I don't have any voice uh, over or not voice over me talking <laughs> throughout the video, even though I was talking throughout the video. So isn't that fucking great? But yeah, that'll become a TikTok video. So if you want to see me create uh, that uh, cover art page, you can go over and see that. But nonetheless, go check out my comic. All right, let's jump right into the video. When typesetting, there are a couple of things that you want to keep in mind. The first thing that I want to go over is actually choosing the size of your lettering slash font. Choosing the size of your lettering slash font can make it easier to be able to be read or even to fit into the bubble so it like, looks nice and compact. Using too much of, uh, of like too many small characters to try squeezing a long context into a smaller bubble is not going to be a good thing. You either want to lessen the words or even actually just make the bubble bigger so it can fit in and allow you to actually keep all the words if you want to explain it something in such detail or split it up into multiple bubbles allowing you to have more uh room to play with other than that one single bubble now for an example let's look at chapter uh, four page two uh for the context of not trying to squeeze in a lot of text into one single bubble. You can have two different bubbles or two conjoined bubbles that allow you to spread out the text to make it so it's not too compact and you don't have to scale it down as such to allow you to get all the information you need in. So if you have your uh, uh, text scaled down too much, you can actually cause it to be uh, too hard to actually read. The main reason for that is that scalability. When you are making a comic, you have to keep in mind that online on the computer screen on whatever screen someone's using whether it's a phone computer or even their television screen they will have a different scale on which they are able to read said text and different phones and different stuff like that have a different amount of pixel density to allow you to said read said text so you want to make it so that it isn't tiny text that they are having to try to read because of that scalability you want to have some nice juicy text you don't want to have them too big you want to have them too small but you can find that nice medium and like i talked about when making the comic page you want to actually have them more centered in the bubble so it's easier to read so they have that nice spacing around them so people can actually read them easier like i said but now this brings me into a another thing so what you will notice one of the bigger differences other than like the art improving in the uh newer chapter in chapter five you will notice that I've done text differently. So let me open up one of my pages to give you a uh, a look at that. So when you take a look at this page, what do you see different than what is on the previous page? I'll flip back to the previous page. This is page two of chapter five versus page two on chapter four. The main difference is that I'm using capital lettering. So capital lettering helps with the readability or legibility of the words in which they are talking so this makes it so that someone that isn't that fluent with english or is just learning english can actually read them better and just it's more legible than uh certain fonts and stuff like that that do not have a good lowercase uh version of it it just makes it look more cohesive also because you just it just does <laughs> like this looks better in a logical standpoint of uh form formulating a sentence but it doesn't look that great when it comes to comic book pages or comic book work. You want to have the lettering more or so the same to make it have that consistent and fluent feel throughout the entire page or comic or chapter, whatever you are doing. Another thing I want to talk about is actually going to be the legibility of your words. So legibility, like I said, uh, does pertain to the sizing and how they look going across the screen but it also pertains to how they pop off uh, the backgrounds and stuff like that so if you're adding text over certain uh, areas that do not actually need a text bubble you want to be able to read them fairly easily so 
for example. In chapter 5, page 13, you can see that there is text over the speed lines. So the text over the speed lines are able to pop out because I use something called an outline tool. So this outline tool enables you to have things pop out from the background. So it's easier to be read and it's legible. Uh, so let's, for example, I take away one of these outlines. Look how, how much harder it is to actually read said lettering because of the uh, background being blended in with the text. This outline now gives it uh, a better chance for it to be read and easier uh, legibility to actually occur. Now, this isn't going to be the only example of which I use an outline. I actually use an outline a lot throughout the series when it's just text over uh, a character or text that doesn't pertain to a um, bubble or confined to a bubble. For another example, we could check out another page. So over here in chapter 5, page 15, you can actually see the outline taking an effect here. There is more of a gray a gradient background than a speed lines background or even a detailed background like you can use it there also but it makes it so this pops out more if i take away the outline on this page you can see that it actually is a slightly harder to read on the gradient background it's not as hard but it especially is harder to read when it's going over the gun or the line art it makes it so that it isn't as clear or legible and you want to use these outline tools to uh, allow you to make it so it is more legible that uh, more people can actually know what's going on in the chapter. If you don't have this, there's easily able to be confusion that occurs within the chapter or whatever uh, form that you are creating whilst you are having text over a picture. Now, as you can see, I am using Affinity Design for these word uh, things. You can still use Paint Tool Side too or whatever program you decide to use for word text. Now, most of them will, if not all of them, will have an outline feature. The only caveat for a Paint Tool Sci tool, Paint Tool Sci 2 is that you have to rasterize the uh, words before you can actually utilize the outline feature when you are uh, making text. Now I wanna talk about the last final and probably most important thing is actually the font itself. So there are a numerous amounts of different fonts and you can choose from any single one that you want but you want it to be legible. You want it to be easily be able to be read. You don't want anything like cursive -y or something like that because people might not understand the aesthetic of it or might not be able to read it. You want your comic to be able to be read. You can use uh, different like fonts that aren't really that easily legible for like curses or like spells and stuff like that. But for the most part, you want it to be easily read. So for an example of what not to do, we are actually going back to chapter one, page three. So this is more of a narration type of uh, setting for this page. And I chose a font called X-Files. That was a big mistake. I should have chose a more uh, clearer font, an easier legible font than X-Files. And I even made the mistake of using Paint Tool Sci uh, to actually do some of the wording. So what I mean by that is, as you can see, this font right here, if you can see the mouse, is a little bit stretched out compared to speaking to the rest of the font. That's because I resized it by just dragging and resizing the font instead of actually resizing the uh, font itself with the numbers. Uh, unlike how you could do it in uh, Affinity, you can actually drag the font in Affinity and it will resize it accordingly. Like the actual font itself will resize the font, but in other programs, it will just stretch it out and make it look a little bit more blurry. And again, this font isn't as legible as other fonts that I should have been using, comparatively speaking. So in the future, I will go back and uh, redo these uh, texts to make it more legible and easier to be read uh, in the future. But as of right now, it is how it stands, and it shows that I'm not perfect either, and I am learning along with you guys also. But a good way to actually showcase using different types of fonts would actually be page 18 of chapter 4. Uh, page 18 of chapter 4, yes. Uh, See, as you can see, there are two different types of fonts. The main font being the Dominican font that I use uh, throughout the comic series. And then another font, this one is called like Edel uh, SZ, or you can even use another font called like Death Rattle or any other font to showcase a difference in speech. I utilize this font to show that he is yelling and it gives it more of an oomph, more of a spice, a spice of meatball to be able to... Uh, utilizes font so it gives it a different type of jazz pizzazz feeling it just 
makes it look a lot nicer that there isn't the same font consistently throughout. Having the same font consistently throughout for special occasions will kind of dampen the mood to a certain extent. So if you want to have that special occasion, like I said, you can use it for spells and different things. You can use certain fonts that are a little bit harder to read uh, or that aren't not supposed to be able to be able to be read uh, to offset that and give that special occasion that attention that it needs and should have. Even though I said the last thing was the final thing, this is actually going to be the final thing. Who would have guessed? But <laughs> it's my video. I do what I want. Um, now, the final thing is actually how to obtain these fonts. These fonts are actually readily available to be obtained through just going online and downloading them. Now, there are sites that will charge you for certain fonts if you want to use them. And there are websites that will give you the fonts for free. So when you find a font that you want, you're just going to click the download or save as button. And a usual will give you a zip file. Some might not give you a zip file. Some will just give you the file itself. And you click on that zip file if it is a zip file or the file itself. And then you will be prompted with a screen. That screen will tell you to install the font. And then once you click install, it will install that font. That font will be forever on your computer until you change the computer or uh, migrate to a different one or whatever you're doing with your PC or clean it, your PC, or like wipe it completely clean. That font will be there for that duration. And you can actually change the font inside your programs and stuff like that to match that font if you really like it so much. But yeah, uh, those are that's the way to actually obtain the fonts. I'll be putting down below in the description the fonts that I use in a download link if you want to use them yourself. Also, uh, you don't have to use them. You can use whatever fonts you want. Again, you do want to try to make them more legible. And unless it's for like special occasions where you don't want the font to be legible and you want to have it like a different pizzazz to it. But yeah, that's the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And also don't forget to check out my social media. You'll see an animation playing right now that I created here on this channel. You can actually watch that video to see how I created said animation. And we'll be doing some more animations in the future too. It won't be just helping you guys with comics and stuff like that. Because that will get boring on my end. I want to be doing some other things alongside uh, helping you guys with comics. I want to do some other type of uh, video content that pertain to art too. But yeah, again... Thank you guys for watching. And don't forget to follow me on Twitch. I almost forgot about that. You can follow me on twitch.tv slash Elden Draws. Yes. I have a Twitch channel. You can follow me over there. I go live whenever I want to go live. I have also been dual streaming. So I will probably be dual streaming onto this channel also once I uh, start doing art live streams again. So you can look forward to that in the future. But right now, I'm just playing games over on my gaming channel and on this uh, Twitch channel. So once again, twitch.tv slash Elden Draws. All right, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you later. Peace. Uh -huh. Bye bye. <laughs>